Scenes from science fiction films have now become a cold and deadly reality on the deck of the Royal Navy. The images released by the UK Ministry of Defense, which had previously been classified, show an invisible force moving at the speed of light in the sky, instantly reducing enemy drones to ashes. This was the Dragonfire laser weapon, and this impressive weapon never missed its target. This system is so precise that it can pierce the atmosphere and hit a coin kilometers away, and it has beam-combining technology that can blind cameras on unmanned aerial vehicles and melt them in mid-air. This technological show of force triggered an alert in all capitals from Moscow to Beijing. Because Dragonfire is not just a weapon, it is the collapse and rebirth of air defense architecture. The threat posed by this system has two sides. We are talking about invisibility and speed. The first focus is invisibility. With this feature, Dragonfire can create a silent, untraceable, and unavoidable energy strike. The second feature is light speed intervention. To understand how this technological superiority is achieved, we must set aside the propaganda headlines and go straight to the laboratory, to the heart of that beam combining technology. The revolution created by Dragonfire lies not in high power figures, but in precision and mastery of optical engineering. At the heart of this system is a critical British technology called beam combining, which merges beams from multiple fiber lasers into a single destructive beam. The historical problem with laser weapons was that the beam would scatter before reaching the target due to moisture and turbulence in the atmosphere. British engineers overcame this challenge, managing to maintain a beam narrow and focused enough to hit a one pound coin from a kilometer away, even at 50 kilowatts. This is an astonishing capability in military terminology. This is because Dragonfire's purpose is not to melt a ship's armor, but to target the precision guidance mechanisms or electro-optical camera of a high-speed unmanned aerial vehicle. Blinding the target's navigation system in seconds means crippling it while it is in the air and bringing it down without the need for destruction. Developed by a consortium consisting of MBDA, Leonardo, and Kinetic, this system uses a second low-power laser and an electro-optical camera to track its target. These components can focus a laser traveling at the speed of light onto the target point with millimeter accuracy against unmanned aerial vehicles capable of reaching speeds of 650 kilometers per hour. The system's architecture combines the intervention with an infinite magazine concept. Since Dragonfire uses electrical energy instead of ammunition, it has the potential to fire thousands of shots as long as a ship or land vehicle provides power. This not only solves stockpiling issues, but also eliminates the explosion risks and logistical complexities associated with storing traditional ammunition. The Royal Navy's plan to install Dragonfire on Type 45 Daring-class destroyers is proof that this technology has moved from theory to becoming a real operational capability. As MBDA Chief Engineer Julia Warren noted, the system's dimensions have been reduced from the original 40-foot container space to a 20-foot space to make it suitable for ship operations. While this reduction was necessary for integration, it demonstrates that no compromise has been made in terms of the system's power and effectiveness. The system's full integration into the ship's combat management system will add a new layer of flexibility and speed to the destroyer's defense layers, enabling a commander to quickly decide which weapon to use against which threat in combat. This is more than a technological achievement. It is the announcement of a new protection doctrine that fundamentally changes the survivability architecture of the modern warship. In addition to the success generated by the release of Dragonfire's test footage, this laser weapon created an atmosphere of instant threat and panic on the global geopolitical stage. With this move, London has proven that it is not only selling technology, but also security for its allies and deterrence for its rivals. This visual spectacle has caused immediate and conflicting reactions, particularly among two major rivals. One of the rivals on this front is China. Beijing felt compelled to respond to this Western initiative with an immediate technological challenge. Chinese military publications and media released ambitious data about their own ship-based laser weapon, the Liao Yuan one. This move may be an attempt to cover up the technological humiliation caused by Dragonfire. Chinese sources claimed that the LY-1's power output was between 180 and 250 kilowatts. On paper, this could double the power of systems such as the US Navy's Helios and the UK's Dragonfire. However, the goal here was propaganda rather than technical superiority. A Chinese military journal questioned Western leadership in this field by claiming that the LY-1's lens aperture was approximately twice that of its US counterpart, 
and that its other auxiliary equipment was more advanced. The LY-1's primary mission, like Dragonfire, was defined as intercepting incoming missiles and unmanned aerial vehicles at close range. This situation proves that Beijing also sees the drone threat and cost asymmetry as its greatest vulnerability. China's aggressive countermove was an attempt to send a message not only to its own public, but also to potential buyers in the U.S. that it is in this race and is ahead. The emergence of Dragonfire is a strategic checkmate move that particularly shakes Russia's military doctrine and fear base. For years, Russia has based its military superiority on seven key areas. Its nuclear arsenal, air power, artillery, tanks, submarines, and most importantly, its capacity for economic attrition. Dragonfire, however, strikes a direct blow to at least two of these seven areas, the attrition economy and air superiority. Russia has used drone swarms as weapons of mass destruction against the West's technological superiority in Ukraine and through its proxies in the Red Sea. The success of this tactic depended on the cost of defense. However, Dragonfire's 10 pounds per shot cost completely eliminates the economic advantage Russia has gained against these drone swarms. Now, when the Russian army deploys thousands of FPV drones to the front, it will pay not for the cost of incoming missile fire, but for the price of an unlimited and sustainable counterattack. This is a devastating blow to military morale at a time when the Russian army is already experiencing internal decay, as even General Kartopolov has rebelled, referring to the collapse of propaganda in the Kremlin. Russian commanders must now see that even their cheapest weapons have become ineffective. Meanwhile, Dragonfire is also undermining Russia's air defense doctrine. Systems like Russia's S-400 and S-500 are designed for expensive, high-altitude, and fast-moving targets. They are, in Ukraine's words, like a sniper rifle designed to hunt a herd of elephants. However, the swarm of slow, low-flying drones with small radar cross-sections used by Ukraine and other adversaries renders these massive and cumbersome Russian systems ineffective. Dragonfire is a direct response to this technological asymmetry. This laser, capable of detecting and destroying small, agile targets in less than a second, painfully exposes the inadequacy and sluggishness of Russian air defense systems. Russia must rapidly develop new technology capable of countering systems like Dragonfire to close this gap. However, this means catching up to the West's years of technological and engineering accumulation overnight. This is a situation where Putin has undermined his own propaganda with his own hands. For years, Putin has lied to his people, telling them that Moscow and St. Petersburg are safe and that the war is only being fought at the front. However, the rapid advancement of Western technologies such as Dragonfire has spread fear that Russia's most strategic points, namely its Baltic coast ports and even St. Petersburg itself, could be left unprotected against the drone threat. This exponentially increases the pressure on Russia's military security gap. Dragonfire is more than a weapon. It is a decree that destroys the credibility of Russia's drone warfare doctrine. Across the Atlantic, the reaction to the Dragonfire laser weapon was a mixture of shock and admiration. Despite the U.S. investing billions of dollars in laser weapon technology for decades, the speed and practicality achieved by the U.K. with Dragonfire inspired admiration in Washington. American strategists viewed this success by their allies as a positive development in terms of enhancing NATO's overall defense capabilities. Dragonfire's cost-effectiveness and operational readiness speed became a powerful motivator for the U.S. to accelerate its own Helios program. This was not only a potential technology transfer, but also proof of the West's capacity to respond to modern threats with a single voice and a single solution. The UK's move increased pressure on the US to better coordinate its own disparate laser programs. Thus, Dragonfire's emergence created a forced move on the military technological chessboard among global powers. Now, the new laser shield formed by Liao Yuan-1 and Helios in the Pacific and Dragonfire in the North Atlantic is progressing towards permanently neutralizing the drone swarm threat. With Dragonfire's announcement of its operational potential, the concepts of standardization and speed have become part of the agenda for the NATO and US. Although the US is advancing its own laser programs, it has been forced to increase its pace in response to the UK's success. The US Navy's largest ship-based laser weapon program is Helios, which stands for High Energy Laser and Integrated Optical Dazzler and Surveillance. Developed by Lockheed Martin and installed on the USS Preble destroyer, this system successfully conducted its first test against an aerial target in 2024. 
Although Helios has a power of over 60 kilowatts, the US's perspective on laser weapons shares the same logic as the UK's Dragonfire, that is, layered air defense. The US's optical disruptor and interrupter of near-infrared, ODIN, is another system that uses laser dazzlers to disrupt enemy sensors and is integrated into Arleigh Burke-class destroyers. The US's ultimate goal is to develop a laser platform with over 300 kilowatts of power through the High Energy Laser Countership Cruise Missile Project, or HELCAP. However, while this pursuit of greater power continues, the operational maturity and cost-effectiveness achieved by Dragonfire at 50 kilowatts is prompting the U.S. to focus on practical solutions as well. The U.S. Navy's creation of a Helios integration option by installing it on ships using Aegis software proves that this technology has now moved from the prototype stage to the platform deployment stage. Not only the seas, but land battlefields are also being reshaped by lasers. The U.S. Army tested directed energy maneuver short-range air defense systems during live fire exercises at Fort Sill, Oklahoma. These systems were designed specifically to counter swarms of unmanned aerial vehicles, which have become a major threat in the Ukraine war. These tests were a turning point in terms of integrating lasers into the air defense architecture of ground forces. While the U.S. Army plans to launch the resilient high-energy laser program in fiscal year 2026, the success of Dragonfire has become an external pressure factor that will further accelerate this process. As U.S. Army Colonel Steven Gutierrez noted, these live-fire exercises are maturing policy, doctrine, and training areas on how best to utilize directed energy capabilities. While Dragonfire is expected to be NATO's first high-powered operational DW, or directed energy weapon, it is imperative that a technical standard and compatibility be established among the systems developed by the U.K., the U.S., and other NATO allies. This would allow a British warship to be protected by a laser shield compliant with U.S. standards in the Atlantic, while the U.S. Army could apply U.K.-defined logistics and security standards in Europe. This is the most important evidence of Dragonfire's ripple effect on global defense. On the other hand, the reason for developing Dragonfire stems more from a deep economic crisis than from technical curiosity. This was the harsh reality of cost curve asymmetry the most painful and fundamental equation of modern warfare. The cost trap describes a situation where you have to spend your expensive, limited, and slow to produce defense systems against the enemy's cheap, easy to produce, and high volume weapons. The clearest example of this crisis occurred in the Red Sea. Suicide drones and ballistic missiles costing less than $50,000 posed a serious threat to international merchant ships and the warships escorting them. To counter these threats, U.S. and British destroyers had to use SM-2, Sea Viper, or Patriot missiles, each costing over $1 million, excluding service costs and platform expenses. U.K. Defense Secretary Luke Pollard described this situation very well. Luke Pollard said that it creates an economic stranglehold that shifts us from favoring the best technology to defeat weaker technology to allowing our enemies to meet more threats than we can counter. This was part of the attrition warfare doctrine relied upon by Russia and its proxies. That is, if they cannot defeat their opponents militarily, they bankrupt them economically. The same economic disaster occurred every night on the Ukrainian front. The cost of the Shahed Kamikaze drones supplied to Russia by Iran was in the tens of thousands of dollars. However, the unit cost of the Patriot or SAMP slash T missiles Ukraine used to shoot them down ranged from $1 million to $5 million. It was clear that this equation was unsustainable. Ukraine's greatest achievement, its air defense capability, faced the risk of depletion against Russia's economically unlimited drone swarm. Dragonfire was designed to fundamentally reverse this economic equation. Reducing the system's cost per shot to 10 pounds is more than a military victory. It is a logistical and financial triumph. This means Dragonfire can fight Russia's trillion-dollar budget with a bill of just $10. Russia can now launch tens of thousands of drones, but instead of each drone imposing a cost of millions of dollars on the defense line, it can simply vaporize with a 10-pound beam of light. 
This not only rewrites the rules of the defense economy, but also changes the survivability architecture of warships. Destroyers can save those expensive anti-missile missiles for truly high-value threats while using lasers that provide unlimited ammunition against low-value targets. This economic shock proves that Dragonfire is more than just a technology. It is the key to the West's self-defense strategy. In short, the light the UK has ignited with Dragonfire is not just a technological achievement, but the dawn of a new era in defense. Those fireballs at the Hebrides test site, at a cost of 10 pounds, have consigned Russia and China's billion-dollar swarm strategies to the dustbin of history. This invisible laser weapon and its unlimited firing capacity have changed the economic landscape and the geopolitical balance. This game-changing technology has destroyed Vladimir Putin's economic warfare plan. By 2027, when those lasers are active on Royal Navy ships, the oceans may no longer be a safe hunting ground for drones, but a certain death trap. So, with laser weapons, the age of gunpowder is slowly coming to an end. The age of light has begun. And in this age, it is not the first to pull the trigger, but the one who manages energy best who will win. Thank you for watching.